I've been working in the cloud for the last seven years and I've been building hands-on projects for clients from all over the world and I make way over a hundred thousand dollars per year and I know so many of you want to start your careers in the cloud and not sure on where to begin and that's why in this video I'm going to share with you how I would learn the cloud from scratch if I could start all over again. This is the cloud video I wish existed when I started learning and becoming a cloud engineer. Before we get started, you should check out my weekly cloud newsletter where I share free resources, tutorials, boot camps, and so much more to help you make your move into the cloud. First step to learning the cloud is to focus on the foundations. Learning about general IT and cloud topics is key because these foundational fundamentals are the building blocks upon which all your cloud skills will be built on. These foundations are networking, virtualization, operating systems, and databases. Now, I never really dived in deep into these topics when I started my cloud journey, and now I'm spending some time just getting to grips with them again as a refresher. So don't make the same mistake. Don't skip any of these steps. Firstly, we have networking. Understanding how data moves across the internet is key for building building cloud infrastructure as you need to design, deploy, and maintain application and services in the cloud. So you need to understand how these networks actually function and how components communicate within them. Not to mention a lot of cloud security is based upon networking. So I would say that this is one of the most important cloud topics to learn first. Next, we have virtualization. This concept is at the core of cloud computing. It enables multiple users to share resources resources without impacting each other's data. It's like turning one big computer into several smaller ones, all running inside the big one. Each smaller computer thinks it has its own resources like memory and storage, but they're all actually sharing the big computer's resources. Operating systems is next. Think of operating system as the boss of a computer. It organizes, controls, and manages everything on the computer, like how we use our apps or access files. It's important to learn this because every computer, like a virtual machine in the cloud, needs an operating system. Without it, applications wouldn't be able to run. Finally, we have databases. Now, as everything we do and store in the cloud is data, you need to spend time understanding the different types of databases. Imagine it as a massive digital filing cabinet. It's where a computer stores, organizes, and fetches information, like how a library keeps and arranges books for easy retrieval. Every app, from online shopping to social media, Media needs somewhere to store and manage its data. That's the foundation layers covered. And in terms of timeline, I would spend a good two weeks just learning these concepts really well and not skip or rush through them as again, they are the foundations for learning the next step, which is learning a cloud platform. Now, back when I started learning the cloud, I spent a lot of time figuring out what cloud platform I should learn first. And to be honest, this was a massive waste of time. I was put off by the amount of services that each platform had. And one day I wanted to learn GCP. The next day I wanted to learn AWS. And the next day I want to learn Azure. I suggest picking one platform and learning it because you can always learn another one once you've learned the other one well, because all AWS and cloud services in general are transferable. I ended up going with AWS and think that that was the right decision because AWS is the biggest cloud platform and the documentation for AWS services is very good. So once you've picked your cloud platform, focus on the core and most popular services. For example, if you've picked AWS, type into Google most popular popular AWS services, and you will see things like S3, EC2, Route 53, IAM, RDS, and so on. These are services that a lot of AWS architectures are built on. And we will discuss architectures in a moment, but almost every cloud project that I've worked on has one or all of these services included. This gives you a great starting point to begin learning cloud services, as it can be very difficult to figure out which ones you should learn first. Remember, don't waste too much time deciding 
designing, pick one cloud platform and a service and focus on that one. Now, one thing I recommend, which I did right and helped me a lot was pass my first cloud certification. And I did the AWS Cloud Practitioner Foundational Exam. This is the entry level AWS certification. And I know that Azure and GCP have their own entry one as well. But this certification gives you a bird's eye view of the cloud platform, what service they use, best practices, architectures, and also just general business topics like why the cloud is here, why it's important, and so on. Since then, I've got certified in my associate and professional level AWS certifications. But always start at the most easiest certification. It also helps with your CV when you're applying for jobs. Now, one thing I didn't do right was not spending enough time in the cloud console when I started my cloud journey. Think of the cloud console as the control center or dashboard just for your cloud platform. And like you'd use a cast dashboard to control various functions, the cloud console allows you to manage and monitor everything that's happening in your cloud environment. It's important to learn as it gives you a visual overview instead of just command lines. The console offers charts, graphs, and indicators, making it easier to understand the status and health of your services. Now the console is more beginner friendly rather than using a command line tool. It's a great place to start before diving into more advanced cloud tools. Now, later on in your cloud journey, you will start to use infrastructure as code tools to build cloud resources through code. And if you already have an understanding of the services and their properties for using the console, then you'll be way better at coding and much faster. Next is understanding cloud architecture. Now, every project that you work on will have a cloud architecture. Well, it should. An architecture shows you what you're going to technically build to solve a customer problem. Imagine it as the blueprint of a house. It outlines how different rooms, i.e. services, are connected and how the overall structure, like your cloud solution, should function and look. And just like building a house, you need a strong foundation. Understanding cloud architecture provides you with fundamental knowledge, ensuring that you use cloud correctly and efficiently. This is something that sets me apart personally, having that cloud architecture knowledge and knowing how services are integrated together and understanding the bigger picture. The next step is all about coding in the cloud. This is the most interesting topic because I have worked with cloud engineers who do not have any coding skills or background, but I used to be a web engineer. And I can tell you from my experience for certain that me having a coding background background has made my move into the cloud way easier and I'm able to learn and build solutions more confidently. Now, coding isn't mandatory, but having programming skills will give you a considerable edge. For example, if you want to learn infrastructure as code and use Terraform and you already know a programming language like Python or TypeScript, then picking up Terraform will be so easy for you. I have worked on cloud projects where I had to use Python, so I recommend learning the Python syntax and the fundamentals in case you need to look up into a repo and read any Python code. Now, the cloud engineers that I work with with no coding experience are doing fine, but they've realized that they have to end up learning to code. So if you are starting out now, I suggest you get to work. Now, next up is all about cloud tools. Now, working in the cloud means that there are hundreds of different services, tools, and languages that you can use to build solution. But I focus on the absolute fundamentals, which are the following three. One tool for infrastructure's code, one tool for CICD, and one tool for your cloud platform. I went with Terraform, GitHub Actions, and AWS. These are the most popular cloud tooling to get familiar with and makes you hireable for any business. This also stops you from spending so much time figuring out what you need to learn and helps you focus on the tools that matter and make a difference. The next step is all about building projects. And if you are a beginner, then businesses always want to see that you are serious about what you've learned and put it into practice by building projects. Now, I always get asked, what project should I build? This is a great question. And I would say you should build projects that are focused on the cloud tools that you are learning in the previous step. Build a project that combines Terraform, AWS, and GitHub Actions. This is again, putting into practice what you are learning and demonstrates a level of skill. Now, of course, it's not enough just to pass a cloud certification. 
innovation. You need way more than that and you need hands-on projects to take you to the next level. I have made a full video about which cloud projects that you should build for beginners and I've linked it below in my video description. So once you're certified and you have some projects under your belt, this is the time to start looking for your first cloud job. And the best way to do this is via LinkedIn. You should apply for jobs and then message people at the company for a referral or some company insights. This will show that you are keen and want to learn more about a job. Otherwise, it's hard to look at a beginner CV and give them an interview. If you want a job, then you have to kind of force through it and get it. Do what it takes to get your first job. This speeds up your learning so much faster. So once you've learned the basic, you've got a job and progressing nicely in your cloud career, I recommend thinking about specialization. This is all about diving deeper into an area in the cloud. And there are many different areas that you can do this. And this completely depends on what you like doing most. Now, some popular areas to specialize in are one of these domains, DevOps, cloud security, serverless, or machine learning. Now, you'll make a lot more money being a specialist, but you should first be a generalist and then specialize in an area. You will not only make more money, but you will stand out way more as a specialist. Now, a big step that I wish I did sooner was networking and joining tech communities because this is a must if you're learning the cloud and starting off. There are literally thousands of people starting their cloud journeys every day and speaking with them keeps you motivated and inspired. The best place to do this is on Twitter. It has millions of tech enthusiasts who love talking all things tech and you should definitely join and start sharing your progress to getting your first cloud job. Look to use the 100 days of cloud hashtag as it gets you connected. Sharing your work and progress is invaluable for gaining insights and keeping an eye out for job opportunities. Now, moving into the cloud is a journey. You will have lots of ups and lots of downs, but the key is to be consistent and push every day to becoming better. Make a learning plan, stick with it, and you will have multiple job offers in no time. Now, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you on the next one.